is Amina Hall, and I am the event manager with the Health Collaborative. The Health Collaborative is a nonprofit, multi stakeholder organization located in Cincinnati, Ohio. We are basically the hub for healthcare in the region. Collectively, we work together to help serve the community. We lead data driven improvements that result in healthier people, better care, and lower cost. Our services include a robust set of improvement-oriented benefits to our memberships, including 30 hospitals and health systems, 150 long-term care facilities, and 100 select business partners. And today I have the pleasure to have Joanna Hill, Hall, sorry, Hall, joining me today. She's the director with the YWCA, and Joanna's going to share with us some information about what she does as the director of domestic violence residential services at the YWCA. Hey, Hey, Joanna. Hello, thank you for having me on today. So I oversee our two shelters, one in Hamilton County and one in Claremont County, and then all of our housing programs that provide transitional housing and rapid rehousing projects. We have about 81 beds within our two shelters, um, and we service several different counties. We service Hamilton, Claremont, Brown, and Adams County with those two shelters, and we provide a array of services. Um, We have a full-time therapist, which will assist our clients that have mental health needs. We also have a workforce development individual who will help people get their uh, new resume building, help them um, get a job, and then also she will assist them if they need uniforms um, for their new um, employment and also financial literacy. Um, So, and we also have some case managers. We have, um, we offer three meals per day at our Hamilton County shelter, um, three hot meals um, at our Hamilton County shelter, which is very important. Um, And right now we're just working to make sure that our survivors are staying healthy and safe and social distancing. Yes, very, very (laughs) much. Can't emphasize that enough. That word is a a new hot phrase. And so it is. (laughs) And we are all adjusting. You know, some of us are working from home, trying to figure out how to still have business as usual. And uh, we've got the kids in the background. (laughs) (laughs) You know, we've got the dogs barking. And so we're all trying to figure this out and being home and uh, being moms and dads and, you know, caretakers. Yes. And it's a lot, you know, for folks to try to juggle right now. Um, yes. And it's a scary time. Let's just be honest. It's a scary yes. time with this COVID-19 pandemic. So with that being said, I know there's probably maybe been an uptick and some um, folks experiencing some unfortunate situations in their home uh, with domestic violence. Um, As we know, one in three women and one in five men will experience domestic violence. Um, And so with the stress of all of this happening, um, no one saw this really coming. You know, it's been a change in a lot of people's emotions and a lot of just your day to day. Your day to day has changed. So, um, you know, how if you can explain how is the YWCA responding, you know, to those needs of those individuals that could utilize their services. Okay. Um, So we still have our 24 hour hotline um, going on right now. Um, About four weeks ago, we decided to move all of our residents into other housing. Um, So they're no longer placed at the shelter. They're in other housing um, environments so that we can practice social distancing and they can have a space of their own so that they're not in a community setting. Um, So we, even though we've lost about maybe four staff um, due to the um, pandemic, we are still able to have our 24-hour hotline. Survivors are able to contact us at 513-872-9259 to get access to those services. And Can you we'll, say that one more time? Say that number one more time. He said it kind of I fast, sure and I want to make sure everybody <laughs> hears it. <laughs> yes, 513-872-9259. And they contact that number any hour of the day, whether it's just to have someone to talk to, to do a safety plan, or if you need shelter services, we will be there. Um, just give us a just give us a call. Okay, great, great. So 
What coping mechanisms would you um, suggest for individuals who, you know, are experiencing additional stress in the home and uh, with their families and just trying to juggle it all, trying to balance it all, trying to, you know, be there for everyone and they just don't have enough hours in the day right now and it's overwhelming. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So one of the things that we have seen is a um, uptick in our individuals, our survivors having issues with mental health. Um, the anxiety has definitely increased. Um, we have suggested to them to get out and take a walk um, with the children. We have we offer coloring pages. We offer activities with the children so that they can try to change things up on a daily basis because we all know that our children need to get out and run. They're not used to being stuck in the space. Yeah period of time and us as adults is hardly handling it so just imagine how our children are feeling so really just trying to do different daily activities um, exercise um, journaling um, we talk about getting on the internet finding different things that you can learn and teach your um, youngsters and most importantly check in on your family and if you haven't heard from someone, um, make sure you either email, Facebook, some type of social media, um, just so that you can have that interaction with people instead of being face to face. I know that some people still want to be in crowds and want to be together, but it's important that we all practice social distancing right now. Yeah, yeah, it is tough. Um, my grandmother, she lives in an assistant living um, seniors home and she has now, I think, been five weeks, six weeks, you know, there. And she's still, she's uh, 89, and she still Ooh. drives. She still goes oh to doctor's, yeah, appointments, <laughs> and she drives all over the city. And so she's really not liking this right now. No. She's, <laughs> she's like, I got to get out of here, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they won't, you know, her, her um, home they have literally said, if you are a resident here, you may not leave, you may not have any visitors, um, and even the staff, you know, they're coming to deliver their meals to them three times a day because they don't want them going even to eat in the on-site restaurant or visiting the library. They're pretty much telling them, stay quarantined in your home, which, you know, for someone who's 89, you know, very much together, still driving, She's mm -hmm. like, this is a lot. So, you know, I do definitely call her regularly more so talking to her. And, you know, it's like we have the same conversation pretty much every day. When is this going to That's end? all right. <laughs> as long as you're having the conversation, that's yeah. what's important. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So calling, like you said, and, you know, she. I wish she had a phone where I could see her face and FaceTime her, you know, yes. to be able to talk to her and see her firsthand. But she she doesn't know how to use that. <laughs> oh, yes. And that's what we're telling some people, you know, download Zoom uh, and have a conversation or the Google Duo. You can yes. have a conversation of face to face. That way your kids can see their aunts, their uncles, their grandparents in that way instead of. Oh, I on the uh, other end. So, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, very much, very, very much important to stay in contact stay in touch with some folks and you know it feels good to you know get a text message and get a phone call or get an email from someone you haven't heard in a while and say mm -hmm. hey I was just checking on you you know check yes. in with people um, on a regular basis just maybe once a week on Sunday you know that's yes. your day to just call or text or send a little message and that I know brighten someone's day Yes, yes. Now, I will say the YWCA, we check in with our clients on a daily basis um, because okay. we know the importance of domestic balance. Um, they're fleeing these situations, and we want to make sure that they're continuing to be safe. And if we need to um, update their safety plan, that we have that opportunity to do that. Yes, okay. So can you just tell me, with the shelters and how the... Um, shelter is set up for them to be able to practice social distancing are they in individual spaces are they you know able to kind of interact with other folks how how does that look so back in early march we started having the discussion with the family housing partnership which is a group that work together that have family shelters on okay. what we're going to do if the stay-at-home order was to be put in place because most family shelters are communal living, which means that there could be upwards of six to seven yeah. 
in one bedroom and they'll be sharing a bathroom with upwards to six to 10 people. Right. So the decision to move them into alternative housing so that they could have their own space so that it's just them and their family or if it's an individual, it's just that one individual in that space with their own restroom, their own um, kitchen and things make sure that they're able to practice social distancing because if they would have stayed in the shelter environment there's no way that we could have done that yeah um, we wanted to make sure that they stayed safe and healthy good good okay very good okay well i don't want to take up too much of your time joanna i really appreciate you joining me today i just have one more question for you how sure. does partnering how with the ywca partnering with the health collaborative how has that helped spread the word about your mission and your resources that you offer yes so the thing that i love about the health collaborative is that you all have an array of services that you can provide us these resources for. Um, you've helped us um, save money. I'm not sure if you're aware of this, but you've helped <laughs> save money on our food. We used to use one individual company, but then somehow, I guess, one of the hospitals that you all work with gave us this information a few years ago and we were able to save a lot of money so we greatly appreciate that and then also the VP of the YWCA is working on a it's a committee that you all just started with providing services to um, homeless individuals um, so we're working together in that um, area so really just providing resources to us and we we greatly appreciate that Great, great. Well, we're happy to help. We definitely are here to support the YWCA in any way that we can. And it has been a pleasure talking to you today, Joanna. Thank you. Same I thank here. You for thank you. Taking time out of your Friday. I mean, yes. I, I don't know where you're going to go, you know, after work, but. <laughs> Home. <laughs> <laughs> Look, right where I am. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yes. it's been a pleasure talking to you, and thank you so much. And I uh, look forward to hopefully meeting you someday soon when this is all over in person. Yes, yes, we will. <laughs> we'll have to make that happen. Yes, okay. Well, have a wonderful day. Thank you. You as well.